Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's News Roundup. Navdi Baines, the former liberal industry minister, was appointed by Trudeau, who resigned in 2021, now has been alleged of robbing $76 million from the taxpayers' hard-earned money. Critics argue that this misuse of funds points not only to poor oversight, but also potential corruption within the Trudeau administration. The optics of the situation are particularly troubling given Bain's former high-ranking position within the government and his subsequent appointment as Roger's chief corporate affairs officer. Baines, who served as the industry minister from 2015 to 2021 under Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, was responsible for significant regulatory decisions impacting Canada's telecom industry. During his time in office, it has been alleged that he appointed several directors who misdirected a substantial amount of taxpayer funds. These funds, intended for public benefit, instead allegedly ended up boosting the personal and business interests of these directors. But before we dive deeper into the details, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more engaging content and updates on important issues. The core of the criticism directed at Bain's hinges on his oversight, or rather the lack thereof. The claims suggest a potential lapse in judgment or perhaps a deep-seated issue of accountability within the administration he was part of. Political analysts and critics have pointed to this as yet another instance of mismanagement of public funds and resources. Ben Klass, a telecommunications researcher, and Brian Mass, an NDP industry critic, have been especially vocal about the need for an in-depth review of these transactions and the decisions leading up to them. They call for heightened transparency and a thorough investigation to ensure that such instances do not recur. It's fair if you're a liberal. You recommended her to the governor and council. I would ask you, were you aware that Andre Lise Mateau, who you also put on the board, voted for $42 million to her companies? Were you aware that former liberal staffer and Trudeau organizer Steve Kukucher, you put on the board in this fair and open process, who voted his companies more than $25 million of taxpayer money? Are you aware that you appointed Guy Oumet from Quebec, who voted for $4 million in this fair and open process for his own companies? This is your legacy as minister. Beyond the question of oversight, some critics go further, suggesting possible corruption within the framework of the Trudeau administration itself. The funneling of $76 million into private enterprises raises red flags about the integrity of Bain's decisions and the larger network of governmental financial allocations. As discussions around these allegations grow louder, there is great public interest in understanding how and why such significant amounts of taxpayer money could be diverted with seemingly little consequence, Critics argue that these allegations highlight a pressing need for greater scrutiny and accountability in government spending. Transparency is paramount when it comes to the allocation and distribution of taxpayer funds, and there seems to be a pressing demand for mechanisms that ensure this. Proponents for transparency suggest regular audits, and stricter supervisory frameworks could serve as deterrents against misuse and possible corruption. Regular audits of government allocations. Stricter oversight frameworks transparency in appointments and fund distributions. With Navdeep Baines now in a pivotal role at Rogers, these allegations have inevitable implications for the telecom giant, the potential conflict of interest, and the influence that Baines could wield on government policy is a matter of serious concern. Given his new role at Rogers, the transparency and accountability expected from someone in his position face heightened scrutiny. It remains to be seen how these dynamics will unfold and what measures Rogers will implement to safeguard against any undue influence. Navigating through the allegations of the misuse of taxpayer funds by appointees of Navdeep Baines, this chapter has delved into the criticisms regarding his oversight, potential claims of corruption, and the resulting demand for greater transparency in government financial practices as these investigations proceed, the broader implications for governance and industry relationships, such as those between Baines and Rogers, will continue to evolve. This issue undoubtedly underscores the need for robust mechanisms to prevent such conflicts of interest and safeguard public resources. Also, discover our exclusive collection of mugs, hoodies, and a variety of daily accessories designed for Canada Conservative Party supporters. Show your pride with our conservative-themed products at affordable prices. Enjoy free delivery across Canada. Former Liberal Industry Minister Navdeep Bain's new position as Rogers Chief Corporate Affairs Officer has raised eyebrows and prompted discussions on the revolving door between politics and industry.
Baines, who served under Prime Minister Justin Trudeau from 2015 to 2021, is now set to oversee Rogers' public policy, environmental, social, and governance initiatives, along with managing government affairs. This appointment has drawn significant criticism due to the potential conflicts of interest considering Baines' prior role in regulating telecommunications and other sectors. Critics argue that Bain's transition from a high-ranking government official to a top corporate executive in the telecommunications sector creates a murky overlap that could hinder impartial regulation. Telecommunications researcher Ben Klass and NDP industry critic Brian Mass have voiced concerns about Bain's capacity to remain unbiased given his recent history as a regulator within the same industry he is now set to serve. Although Baines is prohibited from lobbying the government directly in his new role to adhere to the Lobbying Act, skepticism remains high about the overall influence Rogers might gain through this strategic appointment. But what do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments below and let's keep this important conversation going. Also, take a minute to visit our website, sign the petition demanding Justin Trudeau leave the office immediately, and sign up for our newsletters to get uncensored news in Canadian politics. And do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more updates. You set up a billion-dollar slush fund for the Liberal Party that people could feather bed their own investments and break the law by furthering the value of their investments in companies using taxpayer dollars. Is that what you intended to do? As I indicated in my opening remarks, uh, I left and uh, uh, left cabinet on January the 12th of 2021. So I'm not sure which appointments were before or after that. I would also indicate the end. Boy, the it's process great to have amnesia. The appointment of Baines has brought forward a broader debate regarding the ethics of former politicians transitioning into influential industry roles soon after leaving office. This phenomenon, often referred to as the politics to industry pipeline, has been a subject of scrutiny for years. Critics argue that such moves can undermine public trust and the notion of a fair regulatory environment. Baines is not an isolated case as other former liberal ministers like John Manley at TELUS have also taken up prominent roles within the telecom industry. This pattern has intensified calls for stricter regulations and greater transparency to mitigate perceived conflicts of interest and ensure a level playing field for all industry stakeholders. A significant concern tied to Bain's appointment is the risk of regulatory capture, where regulatory agencies may potentially be dominated by the industries they are charged with overseeing. Such a scenario could lead to regulations that are more favorable to industry players at the expense of consumers and fair competition. Observers worry that Bain's deep familiarity with government operations and his insider status could inadvertently or strategically benefit Rogers, placing undue influence on policy and regulatory outcomes in favor of the telecom giant. Given the controversies surrounding appointments like Bain's, there is a growing demand for reforming lobbying rules and ensuring that stricter safeguards are in place. Advocates for reform argue that existing regulations and post-employment restrictions are insufficient in addressing potential conflicts of interest. Further, they call for comprehensive measures that would create more transparent and accountable practices to prevent undue influence. The opinions of experts and policymakers suggest a need to revisit and possibly overhaul the framework governing the politics to industry transition to preserve the integrity of public administration and industry regulation. The appointment of Navdeep Baines, a former liberal industry minister, as Rogers' chief corporate affairs officer, has ignited widespread concern regarding the company's potential to influence government policy. Given Bain's former role in regulating the telecommunications sector and his membership in Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's cabinet from 2015 to 2021, there is a palpable unease about how this could affect objective policymaking. Critics are questioning whether this appointment is tantamount to giving Rogers undue sway within the corridors of power, particularly regarding policies that directly impact the Canadian telecom industry. The implications of Navdeep Bain's appointment to Rogers shed light on the critical need for reassessment and reinforcement of regulations governing the nexus of politics and industry. As the discourse evolves, it is imperative to foster a regulatory landscape that prioritizes transparency, ethical integrity, and robust safeguards against the potential for conflicts of interest. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and share this video if you found it informative. Your engagement helps us continue creating content that explores important issues facing Canada today. For more updates, visit scoopcanada.com.